everyone. We're back for our final meeting. Makes me kind of sad. Me too, but think of all the things that we covered. We've learned about buoyancy. And electricity. We've learned how to build a sea perch. And why it works. You know, I really did like learning the science. It's fun to conduct experiments and figure out why things happen. And without understanding the science, the sea perch might not even work. You're right. And there is one exciting thing left that you guys have to look forward to. Operating your sea perch. Yes. Getting your sea perch in the water and making it go. That's a pretty cool payoff. I can't wait to watch those sea perches float and sink. Float and sink? You heard me. A sea perch shouldn't float on top of the water. Once the sea perch is submerged in the water, it needs to be neutrally buoyant so it will sink beneath the surface. Then float above the floor of the pool and not sink completely to the bottom. And to make it neutrally buoyant, you need to remember all the science we've already learned. Like the center of gravity. Your ROV needs three motors, each with its own propeller. In order for you to be able to properly maneuver your sea perch, the location of the motors is extremely important. The movement will also be affected by the ballast or weights that you've added to your ROV. I think it's time for a little review and a bit more new information. Remember buoyancy? That's the tendency for an object to float or sink. But there's also something called trim. That's the ability of an object to balance in water. Trim is controlled by the locations of the center of mass versus the center of buoyancy. For your sea perch, the center of buoyancy is the point directly in the center of the floats. The center of mass is roughly the midpoint between all three motors. If the center of buoyancy is not directly over the center of mass, then the perch will tilt until it becomes so. The result is that the sea perch will face up or down, but not level, which is your goal. You need to get your perch to float just kissing the surface. You don't want to submerge it completely under the water. You will use your perch at depths where the pressure changes the flotation slightly. It's easier to add some ballast rather than add flotation. So start by putting your completed perch in water and see how it sits. Then remove pieces of flotation until it just breaks the surface. Once the buoyancy is close, you should set the trim. Do this by sliding and securing the flotation to adjust how the perch sits in the water. You can also adjust the trim by adding weight. Once you've got it floating, you need to get it to sink. Using the vertical thruster, you have to drive your perch down. If it won't go down or stay down, you need to adjust the buoyancy. Perfect balance would mean your perch sits one to two feet off the bottom with the tether holding it to the bottom of the pool. The tether is the cable that connects your sea perch to the controller. But there is a lot of it, so it will sit on the bottom of the pool while your sea perch moves around. The little bit of reserve buoyancy is being used to support a certain length of that as well. And that same reserve buoyancy will also affect the trim. Buoyancy is not just something you can set and forget. And speaking of forgetting, don't forget your sea perch needs to be able to carry things like cameras or the objects that need to be picked up during the competition. You need to take all of this into account as well. You also have to be able to move your perch forward and backwards. Both motors are required to move in a straight line. This puts the center of force in the middle of the perch close to the center of the resistance of the perch as it moves through the water. You can turn your perch by shifting the thruster to one side or the other. For example, if you use only one motor, the perch is going to turn in the opposite direction. And turning both the motors in opposite directions at the same time will make the perch spin without moving since the two forces cancel each other out. Your sea perch kit has all of this information. You can reference it at any time, or you can just watch this video again. Take your time and really try to fine tune your sea perch. Each modification helps you improve the speed, efficiency, maneuverability, and the overall performance of your sea perch. Before the competition even begins, your sea perch will be inspected by the judges, and then the fun really begins. Every ROV has to go through an obstacle course to test the maneuverability of the sea perch. The obstacle course consists of several 24 inch rings through and around which the sea perch must maneuver. Middle school students will also be required to do a recovery mission. You'll use a hook or rod that you have designed and attach to your sea perch prior to the competition so that you can retrieve hooks from the bottom of the pool. And finally, high school students will need to do a mine neutralization mission. You'll use a rod to probe mines, effectively releasing them from the mine floor. And don't forget the team notebooks and presentations. Also, there are three general rules that you need to remember for the competition. First, you can only move your sea perch using its own power. In other words, you can't pull at the tether. You've got to use the controls. Second, modifications to your sea perch cannot cost more than $20. You'll have to submit receipts. And third, during the competition, only two team members are allowed on the pull deck. While you're there, you must wear rubber shoes. Safety first, guys. And nothing except your sea perch can be put into the water. But all of this is listed in your sea perch manual. If you read it over, and then read it over again, you won't forget anything. We hope that you've had fun learning about the science of sea perch with us. We know you're going to do great. Good luck. We'll be rooting for you.
All right, our final step is going to be installing our thrusters and our final cleaning up of the vehicle, which will include uh, hooking up our tether and sealing up all of our wires so that we can put them in the water. To install our motors, okay, we need to take our orange wired motor, which is our vertical thruster, and we need to place it inside the brackets that we put on earlier. And these will have to be possibly loosened up some more in order to fit them in. In fact, don't be afraid to just take it off completely while you're working on it. Okay. We will put our motor into the holder and then screw this back together. And now these don't need to be tightened all the way down, just enough to hold the motor and you don't want to squeeze it too much and squeeze all the wax out of your canister. So just screw it on enough to hold it in place. And now we'll do that for all of our thrusters. So before we mount our red and green motors, we want to make sure that we put the right one on the right side with the way we put our controller together. So we'll go ahead and test by using the right button on our controller, okay? Which is in our case, our green wire. We'll make sure we put that on the right side of our vehicle. And finally, we'll put the blue motor on the other side. All right, so we now have all of our motors mounted. Go ahead and straighten up the perch now that we've gotten everything put together. We have our tether ready to be mounted. And everything's go. We can go ahead and try all of our thrusters one last time. All right. For our tether, it's important to have the tether come off the back of the vehicle nice and straight. If it's off to a side and crooked, we'll have a tendency to make the vehicle turn and make it hard to control. So we'll lay that right over the center and use two zip ties to hold it in place. We use two in a crisscross fashion to make sure that the cable comes off nice and centered. And again, we'll go ahead and trim off the extra ends on our zip ties. And we're done. Now the last step, to stop water from getting up the out inside of this cable, each of the kits comes with a little bit of black gooey sealer. To take off a small piece of it and work it into the wires We're going to work that into the wires right at this entrance. Go ahead and knead it and work it around real good. And after you got that, we're just going to cover that with some tape so we don't get the gooey stuff on ourselves as we use the sea perch. With that done, we've completed our sea perch build and you're ready to roll.